There's a hidden benefit of insulation that's seldom talked about, yet gives us huge gains. Without understanding these gains, our return on investments calculation will be totally out and may prevent homeowners from doing the upgrades we all benefit from. To illustrate this, let's consider a property that has a 10 kilowatt peak heating load and 15,000 kilowatt hours of heat energy usage per year. Now let's say we improve the property's insulation, which reduced the peak heating load to 7 kilowatts and the annual heating energy usage to 10,500 kilowatt hours. By improving the insulation, the property's heat loss and heat energy usage has reduced by 30%. Great. You'd be forgiven for then thinking that the running costs would also simply reduce by 30% too. However, depending on the heat source and design of the system, the running costs will actually reduce by more than 30% and give a whole host of other benefits. And of course, also further improves the payback time for the insulation improvements. Quick note, this method is from our Heating Mastery course. To learn more about this and a load of other stuff you just simply can't find anywhere else laid out in a methodical, step-by-step -step process to build your knowledge without a load of fluff to get through, go to courses.heatgeek.com. Now before I show you this, I want to point out that the single cheapest and quickest way to reduce heat loss in older buildings like ours is to draft proof. To locate the drafts in our property, we use the Hikmicro or Hikmicro infrared camera. Quick disclaimer, although this video isn't sponsored, Hikmicro did send us a camera for us to take a look at. No money changed hands, and they did not get to see this video before it was released. This is the box. Comes with a nice little case, nice little zip, and a nice little camera. Okay, looks like a mobile phone. I know you can get these sort of things with mobile phones as well, but this is literally just built for thermal imaging. It's definitely a different design to other ones that are out there. This is kind of a rethought thing, I suppose. Oh, baby. I mean, you can see it's quite thin. USB-C uh, for a little stand or something. Here's your thing for your bag. Put that on so I don't drop the thing. Very nicely packaged. I have to say, like, I'm not looking at this and thinking this is cheap by any means. This does seem like a good bit of kit. And it does fit, indeed fit in your pocket. Pressing that power button, hold them down. Hick me crawl. Oh, we're straight into, we're straight into it. All right, so the minimum temperature underneath that door is 3.8 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, you can actually do that. Okay, you can actually see you can actually see daylight down the side here. So it's quite long there down there. I've actually got strips for this already. Because this is a metal frame, metal window frames, they just conduct heat straight through. Like, that's why you use wood or plastic now typically, because um, metal is crap. Where we puncture through the building, you can just see coal there streaming in everywhere. They've been around and actually put some mastic in some places and some caulking to try and tamper it. But... We've got some holes there to fill basically. That area is unheated out there. We are going to heat it, but until we get the radiator installed, I want to, I've got an automatic door closer because I just got the idea that there's a load of heat pouring through. You can see there is no seal in the corner of that door. So we need to go to the, and seal around this door. It's absolutely pouring in cold. That's probably the main reason. At the top, middle, and the bottom left and bottom right. These doors and windows are fitted really poorly. Quite a lot of stuff pouring around here. Did you see that? <laughs> oh my God, can you see this? Basically, these windows definitely, I mean, they've not, even put, they've not even been screwed in. So if they've not been screwed in, they're definitely not expanding foams around the window, which is not, that's what you're supposed to do with windows to stop the airflow uh, and seal up keeps the insulation. All of these windows um, are, well, some, half of them are blown, and the ones that are installed, even the doors, are just fitted terribly. I was checking around the doors, actually, one of the main air, like, air leaks, seems to be around the frame and then down here like if you put your finger there don't just put this finger there as well you can literally feel cold air blowing on my finger more results on this after i show you the method essentially when we improve insulation we reduce heat loss which gives less work for the radiators to do it's effectively the same as oversizing the radiators and as such the radiator can run at a lower flow temperatures to give the same room temperature Condensing gas boiler and heat pump efficiencies are dependent on the flow temperature they have to create for our radiators. The lower the temperature, the more efficient they are. In this example, let's say the original radiators were designed with a mean water to air temperature difference, MW80, of DT30. 
meaning the radiators would need to be 30 degrees hotter than the room in the depths of winter to get the property up to temperature. If the room target temperature was 20 degrees Celsius, then the radiators would need to be 50 degrees Celsius. If the heat loss is reduced by improving the property's insulation, then the design temperature of the radiators can also be reduced as they don't have to work as hard. The property originally had a heat loss of 10 kilowatts. Following the insulation improvements, we determine the heat loss has reduced to 7 kilowatts. Here's three steps to calculate how much cooler the radiators can be. Take the new heat loss of 7 kilowatts and divide it by the original heat loss of 10 kilowatts. 7 divided by 10 is 0.7. Note that the power requirement has dropped to 70% of the original heat loss. In this example, we're considering the usage of radiators. Now, the power to temperature difference relationship is not linear, it has a slight curve. So, we need to introduce an exponent of 0.77 for radiators to account for this. An exponent is simply the power a given number is to be raised to. Take our 0.7 number, or 70% less power our radiator has to produce, to the power of 0.77. Look for this little XY symbol on your calculator, and if you're using a smartphone, turn your phone on its side. Enter into the calculator 0.7, press the little XY button, then type 0.77. You'll get 0.7598. We'll round this to 0.76. This number is how much cooler the radiators will need to be to do that 70% less work. They will need to be 76% of the temperature they were previously. To calculate the new mean water to air temperature difference, or MWAT difference, that the system can operate at, multiply the original mean water air temperature difference of 30 degrees that they were operating at by 0.76 and we get 22.8 Celsius, or rounded up to 23 degrees Celsius. This is our new MWAT, or mean water to air temperature difference. The radiators now only need to be 23 degrees hotter than the room midwinter, rather than the 30 degrees previously. Or, if the room temperature was required to be 20 degrees Celsius, then the radiators would now only need to be 43 degrees Celsius instead of 50. Remember, these are average water temperatures for the radiators. In other words, the middle water temperature between the flow and return. The flow temperature for a heat pump will be around 2.5 degrees higher than this, since heat pumps typically operate at 5 degrees temperature difference between the flow and return. So around 45.5 degrees for the flow and 40.5 degrees for the return. For a condensing gas boiler, this flow temperature will be around 10 degrees higher than this, since they operate at around 20 degrees difference between flow and return. For this example, this would be a flow temperature of 53 degrees and a return temperature of 33 degrees. Now, let's see how much more efficient the heat source will be with the new reduced radiator temperatures. To do this, we can simply refer to the manufacturer's tables for heat pumps or the stoichiometric gas efficiency table for condensing gas boilers. Remember, we'll be considering the flow temperature for heat pumps and the return temperature for condensing gas boilers. With the insulation improvements in this example, the flow temperature for a heat pump has been reduced from 52.5 degrees to 45.5 degrees. Looking at this table for a Valen Aratherm Plus at a flow temperature of between 50 degrees and 55 degrees, the SCOP would have been around 3.7 for the 10 kilowatt model. With the new flow temperature of around 45.5 degrees and a reduced load of 7 kilowatts, the SCOP would increase to around 3.91 if the smaller 7 kilowatt model is considered. If the annual heating demand was 15,000 kilowatt hours, it would mean 4,054 kilowatt hours of electricity would need to be purchased to run the heat pump for heating. Let's say you pay 34p per kilowatt hour of electricity. This would have cost £1,378 per year for heating, not including standing charge. With the new heat loss of 7 kilowatts and reduced flow temperature of 45.5, the SCOP has increased to 3.91. The heat pump can operate more efficiently and has less work to do. If the new annual heating demand is only 10,500 kilowatt hours, then only 2,685 kilowatt hours of electricity is needed. 
At 34p per kilowatt hour of electricity, this would cost £913, not including standing charge. The insulation improvements have saved £465 on heating running costs per year, which is a 34% saving rather than 30 that may have been assumed. If you have underfloor heating, there's even more savings. Underfloor heating has a more linear relationship between power and flow temperature, so it has an exponent of 1. Following the same process, you'll see the flow temperature would reduce to around 43.5 and give a scop of around 4. This results in £892 running cost per year, or a 35.3% saving rather than the 30% first thought. What's more is, as well as the improved efficiency from lower radiator temperatures, there's a whole host of other benefits too. Obviously, there's less CO2 emissions, there's reduced demand on the electricity of the grid, there's slower corrosion rates within your system, which will increase the longevity of the system, there's less thermal shock to the system, again increasing longevity before repair, it's easier on the expansion vessel, so that will need less repair. It reduces cavitation, which protects the system pump, again, which is good for maintenance. It reduces scaling for heat exchangers. It gives cleaner and safer air within the house. There's less heat loss through pipes in unheated areas. And there's comfort at lower room temperatures due to the increased radiant heat versus convected heat. Now, for a condensing gas boiler, we use the stoichiometric gas efficiency table. This refers to the return temperature. Originally, the return temperature to the boiler would have been 40 degrees Celsius, and the boiler efficiency, looking at the stoichiometric graph, would have been around 93%. With a reduced heat loss and lower return temperature of 33 degrees Celsius, the efficiency increases to around 96%, and the boiler has less work to do. Note that this graph doesn't account for the seasonal efficiency like the heat pump scop chart, so it will be slightly less accurate, but all these figures are ballpark anyway. To understand how this lower boiler return temperature increases efficiency, take a look at our condensing boiler article over on heatgeek.com. When the annual heating demand was 15,000 kilowatt hours with a 10 kilowatt load and a higher radiator temperature, the boiler would have operated at around 93% efficient, and this would mean 16,129 kilowatt hours of gas would need to be purchased each year. If gas costs, let's say, 11p per kilowatt hour, it would cost £1,774 annually for heating, not including standing charge. But when the heat load is reduced to 7 kilowatts and the annual heating demand is only 10,500 kilowatt hours, the boiler can operate closer to 96% efficient for radiators and 97% efficient with underfloor heating because of the lower return temperatures. This would result in 10,938 kilowatt hours of gas needed. At 11p per kilowatt hour, that would cost £1,203 per annum, not including standing charge. This is a saving of £571, which again is more than the 30% that may have been assumed. Note, in this example, using the average current energy prices, the heat pump costs much less to run. Also note, in this example, we've used an MWAT, or mean water air temperature difference, of 30 degrees Celsius, so the radiators have to be 30 degrees hotter than the room. Typically, however, or in fact always, radiators are sized at DT50. That means they have to be 50 degrees hotter than the room they're in. So a while ago, you may have seen that we were getting 600% efficiency from this heat pump, and there was no insulation here. No loft insulation and no cavity wall insulation. And as you've seen, the windows don't look that good either. This is going to be upgraded, this property, and we will be revisiting it to see how that affects the scop. Oh, and in addition to that, we are adding radiators to get the flow temperatures even lower. Even basic draft proving can help. Let's give it a go. So we've been around and draft excluded, and actually we've also added an additional radiator. And then done the most important bit. We went and adjusted our weather compensation curve on the 7th of February. If you go to the Open Energy Monitor link, which you'll see in the description, you can see where we've turned on our curve, and you'll see the scop, if you look very closely, has gone up very, very slightly. And we've turned down our weather compensation curve from 0.6 to 0.55. 
our scops should go from 3.65 to 3.75. Also note that these scop figures will be relevant to the outside temperature. Note that all these savings assume this very important thing, that you have weather compensation and that you adjust your weather compensation curve with your home improvements like radiator upgrades or insulation upgrades, just like we did. Weather compensation should never be based on calculations, always set on site via the user feedback and either the user does it after you've educated them or the engineer. Please note the calculation that we've just explained also assumes that you don't have a minimum heat output that's so high that these temperatures will never be maintained, which is particularly prevalent for gas boilers. Ignoring the increased efficiency we're going to get from our heat sources, in addition to the decreased heat loss, spending money on increased insulation instead of bigger radiators gives us one extra huge advantage that larger radiators don't. It makes the plumbing and hydronics a piece of cake for typical older housing and new builds, and also makes microbore much more likely to be fine on heat pumps due to the lower required flow rates. More on that on another video. There's a link to the MCS guide below where you can see the measured heat pump scops for different design temperatures and the graph for gas boiler efficiency can be found on our condensing theory article over on heatgeek.com. If you found this information useful, please hit like, please comment and discuss and ask questions in the comments section. And make sure you subscribe because we got tons more plans.